Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Um, this was called Message in a Bottle. Can we have the uh, slides ready, please, and the keynote presentation? I am an animator. I worked for um, several studios in the US and for the last 10 years been teaching animation, stop motion in uh, Korea. Uh, re for the last four years in uh, Konguk Day. And I would like to uh, share with you my creative process, how I, I make a story. Um, inspiration, you know, how, how do you get inspired to work on a project? Well, there's several ways. Um, for me, uh, I am a voracious reader. I read a lot of books, maybe three or four a month. People always ask me, how, how do you have time to read? Well, it's easy. I don't have a TV. So books are great. They're very uh, interactive. Because when you read a book, you make a whole film in your mind. You see the whole story visually happening. Your own images. Uh, music. Now, music is also very in interactive. When you, when you listen to a piece of music, um, it takes you to a different, different plane, a different sphere. So, once again, you see images when you, when you listen to uh, music. The other one, last one, really, um, that inspire me the most is traveling. Uh, I like travel. I had to travel for several reasons. The first one is that when you are in a different environment, different country, uh, there's a different language, different culture, different food, and you feel like you discover something just like when you were a child, really. So, uh, travel for me is probably the most inspiring part of getting ideas. Uh, the, the red lines that you see are actually my travels. Uh, over 100 countries. Actually, next week will be a new one. I'm going to go to the Maldives. Do you know Maldives? Well, I'm, I'm not going there for a honeymoon. No. I'm, I'm going there for an animation workshop. And it's perfect because there's a lot of sand there. Wine. Very good inspiration with wine. I'm not kidding. When I travel, I always bring with me some notebooks. Um, I mean, sure, I take a camera with me, a 3D camera, but if you have a notebook, you can sit down and make little sketches. You see things much better. This is from uh, Papua New Guinea. Do you know this bird? Do you know what kind of bird that is? It's a cassowary, this tall. So, here's another. Uh, I also write stories. Usually what happened during the day is my logbook. And draw things so that I can remember later. This is from the Solomon Islands. And if I don't travel, or very sh small travel from my apartment to uh, Conde, uh, I always carry with me little notebooks. That's because I have terrible memory. So in those notebooks, if I have an idea, I'm going to write it down. 
And sometimes I make little sketches, thumbnail sketches, just to remember. And then I keep those books, and I have many. And then when、uh, time comes, I need to go back to an idea. Then I look through those old books, and some, you know, sometimes they're bad ideas. That's okay. But sometimes they are good ideas. So、uh, that's, that's what I use them for. Several pages, different three studies. Oh, this is a story I've been working on, and I'm, I'm really stuck on it because it, it's Tangle. I was in Buenos Aires, and I really, really liked the Tangle.、Uh, so I decided to write a story, but the thing is, I am not a tango dancer. So there is a lot of research, and I think the next step for me really is to take some tango lessons. That's how you really get into a project. Now, what is an idea? I mean, really, when you think about it, what is an idea? It's an image, something that happens suddenly in your mind. But I found a very good quote saying that it is a combination, a new combination of old elements, which is very true when、uh, look at the computer. Computer, first computer was invented in 1945, the ENIAC. But then there w a s machines before that. There were some huge calculators invented 100 years before that led to this. So we are in constant uh, uh, evolve, really. This is a very good one, this one, because it's a famous quote, but everybody has ideas. Everybody has lots of ideas. But the problem, if you don't do anything, With those ideas, you will not do nothing. So, you have to, once you have an idea, you have to nurture it and work on it to,、uh, to make it happen. And that is what I do when I,、uh, when I have an idea, I go and work on it. Actually, working is not the right word. I go and play with it, which is very, very important because work is work, but play is play. I mean, look at children play, they enjoy playing. I mean, I enjoy my work also, but when you're playing, your mind is in a different set. Suddenly you feel free, you don't have to earn money. So I go and play with my sand. Here's my setup in my office. And I just throw the sand around just freely. I'm not trying to make beautiful, beautiful images or anything. I just, just play. And usually something comes out of that. Now, there's another quote by Picasso that is very important. Because it is really true. When Children are all artists. When you see kids, three years old, their, their paintings are incredible, their drawings. Give a kid a piece of paper and some pencils, and they keep quiet for two hours. And they create wonderful things. And then we get older, and we know that because of aesthetics and whatever, we have to make beautiful drawings, and it's not good. Really. So we do lose this ability when we get older. To, it was just unfortunate. Now Picasso kept it. So once I find an idea, I have to research what that idea is about. Because a lot of times, I don't know anything. So, and the more you know about the subject,、uh, the better. Your film will be. So,、uh, 
research. I mean, of course, I, I go on the web and I use a, uh, uh, two web browsers only. First one is Google. Um, everything is in there. Second one I use, Google Images. Be never, never. Uh, Google Images because I'm visual, I'm looking for images, so I have to, to uh, use that. Now, it's huge, the web is huge, but a lot of time you actually um, don't, you cannot find what you need. So you have to make your own references. And there's a film I did, I will show you some uh, images later, where I needed a woman, a young woman, with a dress, long hair, reading a book, sitting down. And <clears throat> impossible to find, so I called my assistant and asked him to uh, model for me. And she did, and took a picture. You will, you will see the, uh, the other one later, in sand. And then I take the picture, I print it, and I put it on my wall. So that I have all those images that I need. In fact, I really need to clean up my wall, I can see now, from this perspective. So, and then I use these, uh, sometimes they're very difficult drawings. So I use them to, the photographs to, uh, as a model, really, basically. Then, story. Now, story is probably the most difficult thing to do. Even if the story is simple, and actually I will tell you something, simple is very difficult to do, really. Each story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Every one of them. Now, your idea, your initial idea, does not have to be the end. It could be the middle. It could be at the beginning. Not important. What is important, it is just a way to start how to tell that story. For example, in this one, same, same story with the girl reading the book. My original story was, original idea was uh, a flying book. I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. So, I drew a book and I said, well, so what? Now, now what do I do? So I thought maybe that little girl is going to ride the book. And she'd be riding like, like on a horse on the book. But it didn't look right. So I took the book upside down. It looks more like a bird now. And then I decided to have it like this, especially because I wanted to have the titanic uh, uh, feeling, titanic moment. So here's the... Um, but then I thought, well, how can books fly? Even though it's magic, you have to have a reason. And my, my reason was, I will show you, this is the opening scene, the little girl is reading her book, close up so you can see who she is, you can understand, know her better. She's reading a book and because it is a nice summer day, it's warm, she falls asleep and she has a dream. So instantly once you say this is a dream, then you can do anything in that dream, especially flying books. Uh, in order for the story to be successful, you have to know your characters very well. You have to ask the question, well, where, who are they? And where do they come from? What, what do they do? What, what did they do before? What will they do next? And especially how they interact with other objects or characters or in any situation. The more you know about the characters, the better your story. 
In this case, actually this little girl is really me. She likes books and she likes to travel. So I thought, well, if I were her, I'd be traveling all around the world. So here it started, she's on that book, and below her was a house that changed into a whale. The whale changed into some Chinese mountain and some big city. So she's going all around the world. Next step, I thought, would be great would be to take her to the moon. I mean, it's the ultimate destination. And then when I got to the moon, I thought, we've, I've got to go farther. And I always enjoyed the stars, so I decided she's gonna go, she's gonna go in the sky, way out in, see the stars. And uh, I noticed that one, one galaxy it's called Libra, actually looks like a kite. Exactly like a kite. And I thought, oh, this is how she goes. This is how she goes to the stars and, and flies out. But then I still needed an end, and I struggled with this one until I decided she herself become the galaxy. And that's the end. It's called uh, The Reader in the Sky. So once I have my idea and I have all my elements, every image, and transition, uh, I'm very, because I am an animator, I like transition. I know there's many people who do sand animation like this, but what they do is they make one drawing, erase. New drawing, erase. And it's boring, it's not animation. Where if you have one image, and you change that image and you keep on changing and changing so that it's flowing, then it's really much better. So I worked with those flowing changes. And once I'm happy with it, I make a storyboard. A storyboard is just a frames of each scene of the film so that you, they're not animated, they're just drawn, and they show you what the film is going to look like if it's working or not, without, um, without animating it. So, uh, it's, I draw directly on sand, because the final will be sand, and uh, print it. And once it's printed, I, uh, I make corrections. It's funny, if you draw like this on the table, you cannot see mistakes. But if you see it printed, it's full of mistakes. So I change them, make a new storyboard, and look again, sometimes three times, four times, until I'm, uh, until I'm happy with it. Uh, once all my storyboard is made, and I like it, I have to uh, time my sequences to make it with music, to see how it flows, if it's too slow, too fast. So I just use a, this is the best tool for animators, by the way, that um, uh, stopwatch. So what I do is each scene, I do maybe six times, seven times, and I m check the time. And then once the time is, feels perfect, then I decide, okay, this is two minutes, 30 seconds, and next scene, same, to choose the soundtrack. Um, now, soundtrack, there are some, uh, some rules that I made for myself, so, uh, some criteria. The, the first one is unknown music. I will get back to this one in a second. Second one, beautiful melodies. Just because I like beautiful melodies. And that, I think if I like them, you're going to like them also. Um, third one is upbeat music. I don't like sad. And you know, my students, when they make their film, they love sad. They love sad piano and sad cello. 
and they they always like to have people crying. Nunmul. I tell them if I see one nunmul, f. So, hey. And uh, I don't use music with lyrics because the lyrics are usually totally different from my uh, stories. Unless if it's a music video, then it is different. But for a story like this, no, I don't want any um, any lyrics. Now the unknown music. The reason why I I do not like it. Is because everybody has heard those all the time. Packel Bell, uh, Canon, or the Four Seasons by Vivaldi. You know, it reminds people, and maybe Vivaldi. Oh yeah, my first kiss was on you know Vivaldi and that kind of thing. So I want the music to be fresh because it's a fresh story. So these two are out in my book. And then I have to shoot the video. And what I do, mine is only one take. There's no cut, no nothing. So sometimes it's very difficult because you have to make it many times in, to have the perfect one. I remember I made a music video here for a singer, and the same take I did 37 times. So that's that's a lot of times to uh, to uh, to do, but uh, it turned out nice. So when I edit, so I shoot my video. If I'm happy with it, then I load it in the computer, and I put a soundtrack with it, glide it, and it's finished. The uh, the software I use is a uh, Mac film software called uh, iMovie. It's very simple, but it works perfectly for me because I don't use special effects. Uh, now, this is a joke, actually, uh, it, because uh, my students, again, you know, they, they finish their film and at the end they say, fin, in French. I mean, the end, and I, I hate it. I mean, this is 2011. You know, 60, 70 years ago. Yes, people put the end at the end of a film, but we're smarter than that now. We understand. We're not stupid. Like, yes, this is the end. This is the end. Thank you very much.